Hello everyone. This video is in continuation to our videos where we were discussing about plant kingdom. This is our last topic of the plant kingdom, angiosperms. I'll complete this video. Sorry, clear complete this topic in three videos. One is general characteristics, then the lifespan of angiosperms and economic importance, and then we'll start with the animal kingdom. Okay. So, uh, general characteristics of animal kingdom. Uh, sorry, general characteristics of angiosperms will be discussed here in the video. Watch the video till the end because at the end you will get everything on the board you can write the, write it down for your notes they are all the important pointers now we'll start up the first point is angiosperms are flowering plants flowering plants that means they bear flowers we did gymnosperms last time gymnosperms are the plants with naked seeds here we have covered seeds Okay, so angiosperms are flowering plants. They have all the flower bearing plants are known as and this is the easiest chapter topic actually of the plant kingdom. This is what we are studying from the uh, junior classes as well. So it's may you you won't feel any problem. So flowering plants are the ones which bear flowers. Any of the plant which bears a flower is an angiosperm. They have covered seeds. If you see the is if you see any seed actually for that matter, they have that covering seed coat present outside. So they are absent in the others so angiosperms have this characteristic feature that the seeds are covered they have a great variety you see the plants outside and most of them like out of 190 percent of them are angiosperms it's a large variety almost all the fruiting plants are angiosperms all the flowers which you have at your home are angiosperms so they have a large, large, large variety. Then they have different habitats. They can be aquatic. We all know lotus and all. They can be xerophytic. Cactus, kikar, all these are angiospermic. So they can be xerophytic. They can be you all know cactus beer flowers. Hmm? So they all can be uh, uh, xerophytic or desert plants. I'll just are uh, desert plants. So they can live in a desert. They can survive in a desert. They can be ephemerals. Now this is something new. Ephemerals are uh, small uh, uh, plants which uh, arise in desert regions during rain complete their life cycle during that period and then they die off so ephemerals are the plants of this kind where they will grow in the desert region when there will be rain they'll be they have a very short lifespan survive for a uh, for a s small period of time and then they will wither off or die off so they are ephemerals then they produce flowers with four walls they produce flowers with four walls i'll explain you what is it then they show double fertilization they show double fertilization if you want to do this double fertilization etc and all you can watch my videos for grade 10th sorry grade 12th there i have discussed double fertilization and all for plant my, my, my flowering plants my morphology which we have already done reproduction and flowering plants so it will be clear uh, if you just want just you can just go through the video so that it's clear for you then after fertilization the ovary after fertilization ovary ripens to form fruit okay these are some general characteristics of the angiosperms i'll quickly explain you what are four worlds and all it's it's something related to angiosperms you must know it's there in your book as well so now if we see the structure of a, a flower so we have this first part which is known as the thalamus and on this thalamus the four walls the first wall are the sepals the second wall are the petals and the third wall are the stamens and fourth wall is the centrally placed stigma so these are the four worlds 
Thalamus is the receptacle on which all these four walls are arranged. The first wall is singly known as sepals. and collectively known as calyx then singly we have the second world petals agar ek ek ki baat kare its petals a collective bolna hai to corolla then we have singly placed stamens or collection of stamens bolna hai to androecium then we have this part this central part uh i'll just it's known as it's known as pistil it's known as gynoecium up to you but this part is further divided into three parts the upper part known as stigma then we have the style and the last swollen part is the ovary so these three parts collectively form the pistil and if we talk about stamens this part is known as anther and this tube or the uh, thread with which it is attached is known as filament okay so this is a general structure of a angiospermic flower which has four whorls the first whorl is calyx second is corolla third is androecium and fourth is the pistil so arrangement they are arranged like this and they uh, uh, form this flowers basically mostly have uh, like uh, 90% they have four these four whorls so this is a general basic plan so uh, this is all about the general characteristics in our next video we'll do the life span or life cycle where i'll explain you how a plant shows fertilization and further stages i'll be explaining that in our next video so keep watching liking sharing subscribing thank you